today, I really want to focus on um, the key objective for me is to provide value to you guys and hopefully to inspire you to continue to step into the role of Unleash CEO. And as a company, right, our vision is to really lead a global tribe of Unleash CEOs who are leading, you know, healthy, scalable companies and teams and, uh, and, and, you know, really see you guys achieve the big vision that's in your heart that you started your company for in the first place. One of the most common questions that I hear from people all the time is like, man, you know, Richard, I know you guys hire people. I know you're, you know, a, a leadership team recruiting company. I know you work with entrepreneurial companies and help them kind of build, but like, I've got people problems right now. I don't need to add any more people until I figure out how to better manage those people and delegate to those people. And so today I want to talk a little bit about kind of the back half of what we do with clients, um, which is what we call operation delegation. And it's, it's really the, the, the rubber meets the road of how you take the people you do have and get more work off your plate and onto theirs effectively um, where it doesn't just end back up in your lap, right? Because we've all done that before. We've delegated a task or a project and then somebody screwed it up and it ended back in your lap, sometimes worse than you left it. Um, and so what we want to do is talk through some strategies today on how to avoid that focus on growth. Okay. So without further ado, let's dive in. Okay. So strategy number one, is what I call play the delegation game. So if you're taking notes, uh, this will be fun for you. Play the delegation game. And the, the essence of this is actually taking time to sit down and decide what needs to be delegated. <laughs> and uh, I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs I've talked to who have never done this, right? Um, there's something kind of frenetic about an entrepreneurial company. There's an energy that an entrepreneur tends to feed off of. And it, the energy is kind of like getting stuff done on the fly, right? It's kind of like, hey, you do this. Hey, I need help with this. Hey, can you take this task? Hey, do you got this project? Hey, where is this at? And in entrepreneurial mode, I get it. That can be fun. But what I want to encourage and impress upon you guys is that the more your company grows, the more thoughtful you're going to have to become about how you lead and how you empower other people. And most entrepreneurs just truthfully, they don't make time for this, right? They don't actually spend time thinking and working on their business because they spend the vast majority of their time working in it. So the first thing I would tell you if I was sitting across from you in a chair is my friend, like the first step in delegating more effectively is actually getting clarity on what needs to be delegated. <laughs> and as stupid simple as that sounds, Common sense is not common practice, okay? So I can, you can say, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know that's a good idea, but have you done it? And so if I was sitting across from you, that's what I would say. So a couple of things that I would think about when we play the delegation game. The first thing I would do is examine your team structure, okay? One of the things that I found to be a really helpful um, exercise in entrepreneurship is understanding at any time, how many hats am I wearing? Okay. How many hats am I wearing? The main thing I want to communicate is like looking at your team structure, whether you call it an org chart, uh, we call it a, the scalable team structure, right? <clears throat> Mapping out, okay, what are actually all the essential roles on this team? And how many of those hats am I actually wearing? Now, let me make a distinction here. <laughs> there is no such thing as two people wearing one hat. Okay. So, I find in a lot of entrepreneurial companies that I step into, um, what I call a lot of hat helpers, hat helpers, and y'all who do this know what I'm talking about, where you're actually wearing the hat, <laughs> okay, but you have a helper. Now, that's not always bad. I'm a huge advocate for assistance. I'm a huge advocate for, you know, uh, you know, administrators who take the administrative stuff off your plate. But you have to understand that most entrepreneurs... If you're wearing more than three hats, um, you're in, you're 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 going to be in trouble, right? Your efficiency is going to go massively down. Your company is going to be bottlenecked, and it's because of you. And so, what I would encourage you guys to do is even just take a notepad and pen. I almost linked in kind of our our digital uh, version of this, but I didn't because what I wanted you guys to do is actually just go and like schedule time on your calendar. 
and literally draw it out, draw out your org chart. So draw yourself right at the top. You're like, okay, I'm the CEO. That's cool. Okay. Who directly reports to you, right? Who, what are those roles? Okay. And all the key roles of your company, you need to sit down with a pen and paper and go, how many hats am I actually wearing in my company? Okay. So I'm the CEO. And technically I'm the head of sales or the, the, you know, C CSO. Oh, and I'm technically the head of marketing. Okay. I'm the CMO. Oh, and I'm technically the head of operations. I'm the COO. Oh, and I'm technically the head of finance. I'm the CFO. And, oh, I actually go and do bidding and estimating on a job, uh, you know, when, when I can't get my other guy to do it. So I'm, I'm doing that role. And I, <laughs> and I can't tell you how many companies I've walked into where we actually map out their team structure and they're wearing an insane amount of hats. Okay. The, the reality is like your delegation problem is that you're not actually delegating. You have a bunch of helpers. Okay. Um, you're not actually giving away ownership and responsibility. Okay. So the first thing I look at is your team structure, draw that out, ask yourself, how many hats am I wearing? How many hours does each hat truly require? And this is my favorite question. Are you actually the right person to be wearing that hat? <laughs> Which the answer is sometimes no, if you're open and honest with yourself and with your, your company. Now, doesn't mean you have, don't have to wear it in the interim, but one of the most impactful things I think we can do as entrepreneurs is recognize where we're not strong. And that vulnerability will help us and allow us to step into where our strengths truly lie and hire out and delegate the areas where we are not strong. I know we're pretty high level at 30,000 feet, but now we're going to dip down a little bit more. Okay. So practically then once you've gotten an idea on your team structure and how many hats you're wearing, okay, now it's time to actually make some decisions around what to delegate first. Okay. What to delegate first. And we, we have this cool little exercise that we do called the delegation game. We have our team members do it. We have high level leaders and managers do it. I do it. Okay. Every time I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed and I'm feeling a little bit too much in the weeds and like I need to delegate more, um, this is a go-to for me, right? The delegation game. And it's actually based on uh, something called an Eisenhower box, which if you guys have never heard of that, um, you should go look it up. But it's a little bit of a modified version of an Eisenhower box, okay? And here's how the delegation game works. It's a very simple concept, but it's very, very powerful. And you can do this in... Most entrepreneurs can do this in 10 minutes, okay? Really can. So it's not like this has to take a lot of lo very long, but it can create a lot of clarity for you, okay? So there are four types of work that you are doing right now, right? Four types of responsibilities that you are doing right now. There are responsibilities that you love to do and you're great at, Okay. Now, and this is what I call your superpower. Things in this quadrant, in this box, are things that you should 100% keep doing, okay? You should keep doing them. Why? Because you love to do them and you're great at them. And I can't tell you how many times I've walked into companies too where CEOs are delegating things that they love to do and are great at. <laughs> and my question is, why are you delegating those things? Or maybe the better question is, why are you delegating those things instead of other things? Okay. Is it a trust issue? Right. I find a lot of CEOs, they, you know, love to do sales and for, for the stage of company they're at. And, you know, maybe at this stage of company, it doesn't make sense to hire a sales team. Let's just pretend, for example, I think you should hire a sales team a lot faster than most people think, but let's pretend, for example, you love to do sales. You hate doing finances, but you hire a salesperson and you keep doing your accounting. But my passionate plea to you would be to delegate from the other three quadrants first um, and make those your priority to delegate. Okay, so first you're going to write down what are the things I love to do and I'm great at, okay? The second thing you're going to write down is things that you dislike, but you're great at. Okay? You dislike them, but you're great at them. Now, these are things that you should delegate soon. Maybe not right away, but they're things that you should delegate soon, right? You, these need to be on a list where you're like, hey, we're going to hire this person or we're going to build a system that removes me from this. And we'll talk some more about these are things that you need to kind of start to compile a list. You're like, yes, I'm good at them, but I dislike them. Really common example of this 
would be like client service work, right? So a lot of entrepreneurs have gotten to a point in their career where they're like, hey, I, you know, I don't hate serving clients, but it's not really what I want to be doing, right? My team actually can do it, or I can hire people to do that. What I can't hire people to do is to, you know, go speak to new potential referral partners or market our company or build a brand or, you know, expand to new locations, et cetera, right? So this might be an example of something that you're great at it, okay? But you just like it. You're like, hey, I'm just, um, and, and another way to say this is even if you would say, well, I don't dislike it, it's, it's not desirable anymore, right? It's not what you want to be doing, okay? So that's the second quadrant. Now we're going to hop back up to things that you love to do and you're not great at, okay? And here's my encouragement for you. This is an area for you to collaborate. So let me give you a great example of this, okay? There are some things that I love to do in marketing. Um, things like creating ad creative, okay? Things like... Um, you guys, this is going to surprise you guys. I actually, I like running ads. Um, it, it's something that I was shocked to find that I enjoyed, right? I like running ads, okay? Am I an expert at running ads? No. Am I an expert at creating video creative? No. Am I an expert at, you know, some of these other things in marketing? No, okay? I'm not great at them, okay? It's inefficient. It It takes me a lot of time. It's you know, not my unique ability. So the reason I say collaborate here is because there's certain areas in your business where you simply need to find an implementer, somebody you can implement and collaborate with them. Meaning you may still get to participate. Like you might need, get to be in the ad creative meeting. You might get to be in the meeting where you're strategizing about, you know, advertising avenues or targeting, but you're not owning the implementation of those responsibilities. You guys understand the, the distinction there? There's things in your business that you love to do, but you're not great at every facet of it. And those are the things where you actually need to collaborate with someone. So find somebody on your team, or in some cases, you need to find somebody outside your team who's actually great at the implementation piece and all their job really, all your job in the puzzle piece, in the, I guess in the puzzle to do is to be part of the creative process, be part of the things that you love to do and then actually empower them and give them ownership of the implementation of those things, right? In my case, it might be, yeah, I can help write an ad script if I want to and be part of the creative meeting, but I'm not part of actually, you know, op copying, uh, copywriting, proofing, you know, uh, ad creative creation, publishing, measuring, optimizing, et cetera, right? You guys get the point. Collaborate with people on this. So the second then final quadrant, guys, this is the zone of death. <laughs> And this is where a lot of entrepreneurial dreams go to die. This is where burnout happens is when entrepreneurs are spending a lot of time doing things they don't love to do, they dislike, and they're not great at. <laughs> this is the zone of death. Um, and, and I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs, again, our team has sat down with and just done this simple exercise with them. And this box is really, really full. There's all sorts of stuff in here that they don't love to do and they're not even great at it. And this is, again, this is the stuff that you should delegate right away. <laughs> delegate right away. Like figure out how to delegate this. And you might say, okay, Richard, that's great. You helped me figure out what to delegate, but who do I delegate it to? How, how would I delegate it right away? Well, let me give you guys a couple ideas. So one... For, for the gaps, right? For the gaps, for the areas where you need to delegate something, you need to delegate maybe multiple somethings. There's a couple things I would be thinking about and asking myself about, okay? So number one would be, can you elevate someone internally? Now, a lot of people do this wrong, okay? We do not elevate someone internally who has not proven that they can perform, <laughs> okay? So when I say elevate internally, I'm not talking about giving someone a title. I'm talking about giving someone responsibility and seeing what they do with it. Giving someone within your team who has proven that they can be a performer, giving them some responsibility. So a great example of this is within our sales team, right? We have a couple members of our sales team who have proven that they can perform and have shown their ability to actually step up and help train and lead and assist other more junior members of the sales team. We elevate them by giving them some tasks and some, some projects and some recurring responsibility within the team before they ever get a new title. And we see what they do with it. We see how they handle that responsibility. And 
who, he who is faithful with little, <laughs> right, will be given more. And so, and that's really a big part of how we elevate internally, right? We don't just elevate internally and kind of hope for the best and cross our fingers. I've seen that go wrong a lot of times, okay? But we actually give people within our organization who have shown that they can perform a little bit more responsibility and we see what they do with it. So that's one option for elevating internally. Also, another thing you can do is just look at the performers on your team and just go, hey, I need some help. Here are some tasks and responsibilities. Show them that the delegation game. Hey, these are some things I don't love to do and I'm not great at them. But I think, I think you might actually be a better person on this team to handle some of these responsibilities. And here's what I want you to know. I'm not asking you to do additional stuff forever, right? I'm asking if these responsibilities, if you'd be okay carrying these for an interim period of time, until we find the right person to actually take over those responsibilities, right? And just have that open and honest dialogue. And if you have great people, which we'll talk about later, right? And you have a good culture, this is a great way to delegate things in the interim. And what I would say is that's something you can add to someone's success profile, which um, I don't think I'm going to have time to talk about today, but you can call it someone's job description or whatever. And then, you know, you just know that um, you, you, that, that can't stay on their plate forever, right? You're either going to have to figure out how to hire and outsource it. And hopefully the time that's freed up, if you do this exercise, allows you to grow your company and in tandem with that, actually hire the help that you need. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to skip over the success profile template. I've talked about this a lot in, in a lot of different other things we've done. It's really, really powerful. Um, the main thing I just want to communicate here is like when you're wearing more than let's say three hats. You need to start defining the success profile for the next hat you're going to take off your plate. Okay. So a lot of people are like, well, we don't have job descriptions. Okay. And oh man, it just sounds like so much work to write them. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Don't write them for everybody right now. Write them, write it for the number one hat that you need to delegate and hire. Okay. And we've got a template for this in here for you, right? Very entrepreneurial way to think about framing up what success looks like in a role. Okay. Again, I'm not going to go through all of this right now, but there's some great examples for you guys in here of how to frame that up so that you know, in your mind's eye, the profile of the person who can actually take that hat from you. Once you've found someone, whether you've elevated them internally, you've added it to someone else's role in the interim, maybe you've brought in a third party, right? For accounting, things like that can work great. For legal, things like that can work great. Or maybe you've even brought in a fractional hire. I know some people, fractional hires have their pros and cons, but in certain cases, they can be a huge, huge boost where you don't bring someone on full-time. You bring in a, a really seasoned expert, you know, person for maybe five to 10 to 15 hours a week. Um, and they can get a lot done in that time. Okay. Um, and then I would say hire in-house for best result long-term. Kind of everybody agrees on that. I'm not the only person saying that, but sometimes you got to bridge the gap in the interim, right? Um, and then the last thing I would say, guys, on this is playing the delegation game, right? You've defined what you need to delegate, right? You've defined what hats you're wearing that maybe you need to create success profiles for, or at least the next one you need to create a success profile for and ultimately hire. And then you've decided, hey, with these things in that bottom two quadrants of the delegation game. Can I elevate someone internally? Can I add it to someone else's role in the interim? Can I make a third party or fractional hire? And then do I just need to hire someone in-house for the best results, right? And then once you've committed to that decision, my passionate plea to you is use the document in here called the handoff plan to just very simply and entrepreneurially map out what you want from that person. Map out the process, for what you want from that person. Define who owns it, what the vision is for the system. And then really guys, people ask me all the time, what's a process? How do I even write a system? Or how do I write a process? I, I can sum it up for you very simply. It's who does what by when and why. Okay. Who does what by when and why. And if you can get those four things on paper, it might even only be a couple steps. And you hand that to somebody who is a good person within your organization or a third party or someone, you know, that you're, you're giving the task to in an interim, man, you'll be shocked how much less often that task comes back into your plate, onto your plate, or comes back to you incomplete or, or wrong, right? Why? 
because you've defined the why behind the what, which so many entrepreneurs, even though we're big picture, do such a poor job of. And we've given them a step-by-step process to follow of who does what by when. 